Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to answer some questions that have come in lately about astral projection. Such a fascinating topic. Fortunately, I've been practicing astral projection since the 1980s, since about 1982 when I was in high school, and I started astral projecting, and it was a fun way for me to escape the daily drudgery of being in military school. Suddenly, I was able to travel in the astral planes. So. All these years later, I've been keeping up with it, and now I'm happy to teach others how to ask to project. So let's look at a few of the questions that have come in recently. I've got five questions. I'm going to go through them, and let's all learn from this. I always learn from questions also because sometimes it gets me in touch with the way it used to be for me when it was a bit more of a challenge. And now it's easy for me. Astral projection is easy. So I want to take you from where I was to where I am, but in a much shorter period of time. So question number one, if a soul doesn't have a gender, how is it possible that souls can attract each other in a sexual way? I thought in the astral level, we experience the sense of unity. Great question. And you may think that, yeah, we're just a soul, and as a soul, how do we interact with other souls in a sexual way? For example, I'm a male, and so if I were in my astral body, in the astral world, in the astral planes, and I wanted to interact with someone in a sexual way, would it really matter? Would that even make sense? Would it make sense to interact with someone in a sexual way? And the answer is yes, we are souls in a body, and we are here to experience things as ourselves. So in other words, uh, I have the astrological sign Sagittarius. So I'm here to experience things in this physical body as a male and in the sign of Sagittarius. So when I go into my astral body, I'm not in my higher self. So I think what the person asking the question was thinking of was the higher self. Your higher self does not have a gender and your higher self does not have an astrological sign, but your soul does. Remember, your soul, your astral body, is connected to your physical body by the silver cord that connects the umbilicus of your astral body to the umbilicus, the belly button, of your physical body. You're also connected to, both of those are also connected to your higher self or your over self. That's what doesn't have a gender or an astrological sign or uh, blonde hair or brown hair or what have you or any of those attributes. Sometimes your astral body actually does have your physical body's attributes, including a gender identification. So that's why sex and sexual references in the astral body actually do make sense, because you are experiencing things for the sake of your over-self, so that your over-self, your higher self, can gain experiences. Your higher self does not come down to the three-dimensional plane and inhabit a body and walk around in it, but your soul can do that. Your soul can inhabit a body that's three-dimensional and walk around in it, but it also retains the information, the programming of that body in this lifetime. Question number two, what do you tell to people who have been able to astral project before and now, due to an experience, they can't do this anymore. Well, first of all, I tell them to get rid of the concept of can't. Let that go. If you feel you can't do something, then it's going to be very difficult for you to do it. In fact, you can potentially make it impossible for yourself to do something if you think you can't do it. So, first of all, I tell them to let go of can't. There is no can't. There's do and there's do not, but there's not can't. If you want to do something, you can do it, no matter what it is. So, first of all, I have them let go of that concept. Secondly, I get to the underlying cause. Why do they feel that they're unable to do it? Why do they feel that they can't do it? What is causing them to feel that way? Maybe they had a negative experience in the astral world. Maybe somebody told them that it's difficult to astral project. Maybe they haven't done it in so long that they got out of practice. And I've gone through periods like that where I hadn't done it in a while and then I got out of practice, so it was a little bit of a challenge for me to get back into it, but I was still able to do it. So, ultimately, it's kind of like riding a bike. You're able to do it, but sometimes we can talk ourselves out of 
the ability. We can start to think, well, when I used to do it, that was probably just a dream or probably wasn't just really happening. It was probably something I was imagining. So usually that's the case. They kind of psych themselves out of it. So I get to the underlying cause and then I reprogram them, usually through hypnosis, to get out of it. Now, you can do that yourself. You can make a programming hypnosis recording yourself or purchase programming hypnosis recordings to change your thoughts about that, to make yourself more positive and along those lines you'll be more positive about your abilities to astral project. Question number three, the difference between astral projection and lucid dreaming. Great question. Common question, I get that a lot. Uh, people think sometimes that astral projection and lucid dreaming are the same thing, that if you're astral projecting, you're lucid dreaming and vice versa. A lucid dream is a dream that you become aware in. You become aware in the dream. And if you haven't seen this movie, check it out. It's called Waking Life. I'm not in it. Ethan Hawke's in it. We kind of look alike. But, uh, but I have no affiliation with that movie whatsoever. But it's a great movie. It's one of those movies that was taken, it was shot with actual actors, and it was kind of cartoonized, I think might be the word for it, where they make them look like uh, cartoons, uh, sort of like... Uh, through a scanner darkly, uh, interesting movie if you haven't seen it. But the movie I'm talking about right now is a movie like that that's uh, shot with actual actors and made into a cartoon, but it's got some great facts in it. It's called Waking Life. Check it out. It gives a lot of practical advice about lucid dreaming, how to know you're in a lucid dream. For example, if you think you're in a lucid dream, if you suddenly become aware while dreaming, attempt to turn a light switch on and off. If you're in a lucid dream, you won't be able to. You see, sometimes when people wake up in a dream, so to speak, they're still asleep, but they become aware that they're dreaming, uh, they're not really sure if they're completely awake or in a dream. So one way to check it is find a light switch in a room and see if you can turn it on and off. If you are unable to, then you are in a lucid dream. Either that or the light switch is broken. But if the light switch otherwise works, and try a few different ones, then you're going to realize that you are, in fact, in a lucid dream. Now, a lucid dream is just when you become aware that you're dreaming. That's it. That's all a lucid dream is. There's nothing magical about it. There's nothing metaphysical about it. Astral projection is when your soul leaves your physical body. There's a big difference between the two. Now, can they be combined? Can you be astral projecting and lucid dreaming at the same time? Yes, that can happen. You can be aware that you're in a dream and you can astral project at the same time, which makes life very interesting because while you're astral projecting, things from the dream world, things from your imagination can become introduced into the astral projection experience. That's what happens when you just let astral projection happen to you, when you suddenly become aware that you're astral projecting. What I teach is conscious astral projection so that you are consciously inducing yourself into a hypnotic state, basically a trance or a meditative state, and then you're astral projecting from there so that you're conscious the entire time. Let's take a look at the next question. Question number four, do you recognize people in the astral plane? Yes, if you already know them, then you can easily recognize them. Sometimes even if you don't know them in this lifetime, you can recognize them from a previous lifetime. So people oftentimes resemble what they look like in their everyday life, in their three-dimensional life, in their physical body, they look that way in their astral body also. That makes it easier. Plus, you have access to psychic information in the astral plane, which gives you information about them. So even if they were turned away from you, so you couldn't see their astral face, quote-unquote, then you are still able to identify them in many cases because of the perceptions that you get from them, the psychic impressions coming off of them and coming to you. So you can easily identify people in the astral plane more easily than you can in the three-dimensional physical plane. And the last question, great question so far. Question five, what do you tell to people who start the astral projection process but they can't go forward? Well, great question again because it gives me the opportunity to mention the word can't again. Let go of the word can't. That's what I tell them initially. Let go of the word can't. If you feel that you can't go forward, then you have limited yourself. Henry Ford said, if you feel that you can do something or you feel you can't do something, you're right. So if you feel you can do it, you can. If you feel you can't do it, you're right. It's going to become very difficult or impossible, at least in your mind, for you to do. And possibility or impossibility, those all happen in your mind. You control those things. So 
First of all, I tell people that, yes, you can do it. You can do anything. But secondly, I get to the cause of it. Let's let go of the reasoning and so forth and, and excuses and so forth, if you will, uh, because we all come up with reasons and excuses for things. And let's get to the cause of it. What's really causing it? Saying that you can't do something, that's just kind of bowing out of it, saying, well, I guess I can't do that, so I won't do it. What's really causing it? Probably what's going on is that they've been practicing and it's not really working out the way they want it to or it's not really going as quickly as they want it to. They want things to progress at a certain pace and they're just not progressing at that pace. Maybe they're getting an arm out. Maybe they're getting a leg out and they're not moving beyond that. Well, so I talk to people and find out just what kind of progress are they making. Usually there's some progress they are making, but they're sort of downplaying in their mind because it's not as much as they want. So I usually start with that. Where are you? What have you accomplished? Have you mastered breathing? Have you mastered relaxation? We can start from there. So I can always find a baseline where they are, and I can always build from there so that they can move on with the process and can move forward because we can all move forward in whatever we're doing. So I hope you've enjoyed the information, the explanations, the answers to your questions. Keep them coming in. I love these questions. I love helping people learn how to astral project. I'm Steve G. Jones, wishing you outstanding astral journeys.